Hello, I'm Rachel, the Contracts Lady, Cashflow Queen and founder of the Cashflow College. I train businesses to get paid without asking for money by making sure they've got the right contract, processes, procedures and techniques. But I'm not going to talk to you about that today. Instead, I'm going to talk to you about ebooks and what not to do when writing your ebook. So I thought I'd start with why did I decide to write a foresight about ebooks and what not to do? Well, back in July 2015, I was area leader for Nutsford Evening for Networking Group. And it was a lovely summer's sunny Wednesday. I'd taken the day off to go to Saturn Flower Show with my mum. So I'd never worked that Wednesday. And we got to Tassin Flower Show before the gates opened at half nine. And at 20 to 10, my mobile went off. My foresighter for that evening had pulled out. Couldn't make it. So I'm up at Tatton Park at a flower show with no signal. My group leader was on holiday. My group coordinator had never done a foresight. I got no phone signal. I'm like, right. I've already given my reasons why I'm still walking foresight. I'd already given my, you've raised an invoice, what next foresight. But I've got to do something. This is meetings at six o'clock tonight. So I started wandering around Tatton Flower Show. Mum was talking to me about all the nice gardens and isn't it lovely and what do we want to go and see first? And I'm wandering around going, what can I talk about? Really, it needs to be me, but it needs to be something people haven't seen. I'm like, I know. I wrote that e-book last year. And I did so many things wrong. I'm going to tell you what not to do. So my mum had a thoroughly lovely day talking at me about flowers and plants and gardens and what ideas she could bring to mine and to hers. And I had a thoroughly lovely day in the sun, walking around Tatton Flower Show, writing this foresight in my head. So that's why I've got a foresight about what not to do when writing an e-book. It's all Tatton Flower Show's fault. So I decided the first thing I did wrong was I didn't know why I was writing the e-book. I knew people had told me writing an e-book was a good idea. So I sat down and started writing this e-book, but I had no idea what I was going to do with it, what the aim of it was, how I, how I was going to tell anyone about it, but I was writing it. So before you start to write an e-book, know why you're writing an e-book. Okay? Then I'd done my research, and the research said, you need to set, a time, set aside blocks of time to do your writing, otherwise you'll never do it, because it's not natural. So I set aside four hours a week in two two-hour blocks, and I sat there and I loaded up my Word document, and I set the timer for my two hours, and I sat there and I had a page and a cursor. So I sat there and I had a page and a cursor. <laughs> so I thought, I'll go and make a cup of tea. So I made a cup of tea, came back, sat down, I had a page and cursor. For me, writing at set times did not work. What I learned over a period of probably four to six weeks was don't sit there for four hours a week looking at a page and a cursor. Write when you're in the flow. Always do what's right for you, not what other people have told you to do. And then we got to chapters. And I'm like, right, OK, so now I've, I've, I've got some words that I'm going to put down. But I have no idea what to call them. How do you come up with chapter titles? What, how do I know what I'm going to put in this book? What I learned was I'm very old fashioned, so I have a notepad and a pen. And I have a notepad and pen in every single handbag I have. And the reason for that is you never know when you're going to get the inspiration. All it takes is one bullet point. Every bullet point you write down can be a chapter. Write down one bullet point. If you can create five to ten bullet points out of that one, and for each of those five to ten, you can write a hundred words, you've easily got yourself a chapter. It doesn't have to be massive. 
So don't overcomplicate it. Bullet points or chapter headings, just note them down somewhere and never leave home without a notepad and a pen. And so I was sat there and I was typing away in new chapter, brilliant, so chapter heading, so I need to put it in bold. And then I'd write the next bullet points and then I'd do my paragraph, so each sub bullet is a paragraph. I'd write my paragraph, then I'd put a few lines, then I'd do my bold next chapter title. And then decided that I was writing these in the wrong order, so I wanted to move them round. But what had happened was, because I, was, I had to copy and paste each chapter, move it up, then go back to where the old chapter was and then delete everything, and that was a lot of work. If you start a chapter on a new page, all you have to do is reorder your pages. So if you're going to write an ebook, start chapter on a new page. And then all you have to do is move page numbers around. Much simpler than copying, pasting, deleting, faffing. So, and I was sitting there and I was thinking, right, so I've got all my chapters and I've got my paragraphs and I've got my new pages and I've got my chapter titles and then I need an index. So I went to the front and I wrote my index and then I was reading through it and I was getting feedback from my dad and I was changing things, so an ant, an and needed to be a the or something like that. So I'd go and find the chapter heading and I'd change it. And then I'd go up to the index and I'd change it. And I was doing this one day, as you do, when you sat at home on the sofa in the evening. You know, you, 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 know, you only work eight till three when you work for yourself, don't you? You, know, you never do anything in the evening with the other half sat next to you. No, of course you don't. So anyway, I was doing this one evening. I think Top Gear or something was on the telly. And the other half looked across and he went, what the heck are you doing? I said, well, I'm writing my ebook and I've just changed this in this chapter title, so now I need to go back to the index. And how long have you been spent doing that? I'm like, well, it's probably about week three now of making sure my chapter titles are right. I said, right, you see that thing up there that says format? If you choose heading two and select that for all of your chapter titles, then you go to insert index and tell it everything that's heading to is a chapter title, not only will it automatically change anything you change in the chapter titles, it will automatically update every page number and automatically put them into whatever order you've moved them to. Wow. Can you imagine how much time that saved me? <laughs> so if you're going to write an ebook, use that formatting. Know what the software can do for you, but don't spend hours learning software but know what the software can do for you. And if something's taking you a long time, put the question out there. Because somebody might know a very quick way to answer your question. I have a slight OCD. I don't like odd numbers. I really don't. If the telly's on 25, I have to change it to 24 or 26. I, I don't like odd numbers. And my ebook was an odd numbered pages. So I thought, what the heck do I do? So I went and looked at some other books. And these are the books all had about the author. So I'm like, brilliant. So about the author, sit down and write about me. Yeah, OK, I did, I managed it. But it's not the easiest thing to do. So I think actually what I did start it off was I asked the husband to write it. And then I amended it. So if you need to do something about you, get someone else to start it. And you just pick around and play with it. But this I wanted to be a helpful book, one that people didn't have to keep flicking back in and out of. And so I decided that it needed another chapter. But I didn't want it to be wordy. So I created a tick list. So I did two tick lists. One for invoice templates and all the details you need to set up on your template, and one for all the details you need for every single invoice, which is brilliant. But it confused me, and it got me back to odd numbers pages. <laughs> <laughs> so then I thought, what else can I do? And again, I went and looked at other books, and they all have endorsements at the front. So I was like, right, 
but I've not published yet, so how can I get an endorsement? So I went to six people I knew very well through four networking and said, if I send you a copy of my ebook before it's out there, really, really special this, will you write me a bit of praise about my ebook? Out of those six, five people came back and gave me praise. So my ebook has praise for best invoicing practice at the front. If you ask, people want to help you. If you don't ask, they don't know that you need the help. Then once I've done that, I'm like, OK, brilliant. Now I need to get it out there. So I had a chat to the other half, and he's like, yep, yeah, perfect. So who's going to be reading it? And I said, well, hopefully everybody. He went, OK, so you need to format it. So you need to get it for the Kobo, which is the WH Smith reader. You need to get it for the Apple reader. You need to get it for Adobe Acrobat. You need to get it for this. You need to get it for that. And I'm sort of thinking, well, he said, that's fine. It's this software you need. Bing, 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 bosh. There you go. There's your laptop with this software on it. Now go away and use it. Well, I wish it was that simple. <laughs> I struggled. I struggled for about three or four weeks trying to figure out how I could get this Word document into this and convert it to all of these things so it still looked nice and pretty. And, and after about four weeks, I gave up. And I went on the forum forum. And at that section, there was a help section at that time. And I went on the help section and I said, the help is driving me batty. Free ebook, can't get the formatting right. What do I do? And there's a forum member over in Leeds Way called Richard Eaton. Now, what Richard did was picked up the phone to me. Didn't reply on the forum. Richard picked up the phone to me and said, Rachel, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> he said, you're writing a free ebook. If you were selling it, fine. Get it into every single perfect format because people are paying money for it. But when it's free, go to File, Export as PDF. <laughs> Everything can read a PDF. He said, just do it. <laughs> Stop procrastinating. And within 30 minutes of me coming off the phone to Richard, I had an e-book that was up there on my website. But then I hadn't thought about marketing. And I thought, oh, do you know what? I'll send it out to, to my mailing list, which is great. But my mailing list was everyone I met at 4N. And everyone I met at 4N knew I was writing an e-book. So I wasn't really telling anybody about it. So I picked up the phone back in March 2015, picked up the phone to the FSB. Something had happened. And I said, oh, do you want me to write an article? And they said, well, we'll have a chat. And during that phone call, I said, I've written this e-book. And the guy said, that article's not the story. You're giving away something free that's really valuable to our members. We want to do a story on that e-book. So I was like, right, fine. Uh, Robert, the guy from the FSB, came round. We had a chat for an hour. He took a couple of pictures, and then he went away. I forgot about that conversation until August, my August edition of the FSB Local Voice came in. And when I opened it, there on the front page was a picture of me. And I kind of looked at it and went, OK, why am I on the front page? Then I knew, then I remembered the story. So I read through it, and it was absolutely brilliant. Until I got to the very end. To access the guide, visit www.rachelchiverton.co.uk. Rachel spelt the wrong way. I picked up the phone to my husband and went, you need to buy me that URL. He said, is it even free? I'm like, I don't know, that's your area. Within two and a half hours of me making that phone call, I had that URL, I had bought it, it was pointing to the correct URL. Within two and a half hours of me seeing that article for the first time. Anything is possible if you know the right person to help you. And if you don't know the right person, ask, because somebody will. There is no brawl, there is no problem you can't get round. But then also, just my final one on marketing, 
it's great standing up there in your 40 seconds or 60 seconds and saying, yay, I've got a great free ebook, come and download it from my website. You say that, but people kind of don't go because they don't know what you're getting. And I've always wanted an ISBN number. I don't know why, but I have. So I went online and I got this. I got two copies of my ebook. One that I have that is now really, really battered. Um, and one that my father has, because my father had helped me out massively because I couldn't afford a proofreader. He'd done the whole lot. So for Christmas, one year after I just got these, I gave my dad a copy of the book with a message to him in the front. And he said that's one of the best Christmas presents he ever, ever, ever had because of the thought that went into it. So something from there is the, most, the best gifts you can give don't have to be expensive. These two books cost me £5 plus shipping. Um, and there will never be any more because both of these are actually proofs. I never paid to get the official one done, but I do still have my ISBN number. <laughs> um, so I really hope that you've learned what not to do when writing an ebook, but also what not to do in bits of your business. And I hope you found that useful. <laughs>